All right, so this is a level chemistry paper one last minute tips. So I'm just gonna go through a few things that I've been doing for this exam. So you can take some inspiration if you're a bit unsure in what to do. But of course, it's up to you whether or not you wanna follow this advice because at the end of the day, we're seeing our A-levels at the same time. So this is more just me trying to help you guys out and just let you know about the things that I'm doing myself. And hopefully it helps. That's the only reason I'm making these. I don't wanna waste any of your time. You've got your exam very, very soon and so do I. So I'm just gonna go straight into the tips. Okay, so firstly, if you've been doing past paper questions, and you've been going over the different past papers for paper one, you should know, especially for AQA, that there are some type of questions that come up every single time. Now there's one I'm talking about very specifically and that is a really chunky math question. Almost always you're going to be getting six marks, seven marks, eight marks where someone carries out a titration, someone does some weird like redox titration or back titration or something really long, right? It's not gonna be something basic. And if you've been doing your questions, you've probably seen these type of questions. I think we've all come across that eight mark question. They can look look very very difficult if you find something like that in your exam it could be very very stressful trying to even work out what you're meant to begin with right so please 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 practice those questions if you don't know where they are you can literally go to any past paper for paper one and you'll probably find one of these questions in it and if you really don't know what to do when it comes to your exam first thing you want to do is just go straight to the end because when you're doing these back titration questions you start from the end and you work your way backwards to the top so that you can find the original percentage mass or you can find the moles of something it's always something to do with those what you want to do if you don't know what to do is to just work out the moles of everything write out any equations if you need to sometimes they write them out for you or sometimes they even ask you to write them out I'll come back to equations later on as well and if you don't know what to do just find the moles of everything and just do something with them right because chances are if you mess around enough you will get somewhere close enough to the answer and if you don't get all of the six seven eight mark you'll definitely get a few of them just by showing that you are able to do those different things and you can even write down the equations that you're using just to make it clear to the examiner that you know what you're doing so if you're using the concentration equation or whatever write it down as well it might help in gaining just one or two more marks because if you don't know what to do at that point it is just a case of trying to grab as many marks as you can and then just moving on now that is just specifically towards that one type of question which i'm very very likely will come up again but if it doesn't it's just going to come up in the next paper or the paper three right it's going to come up in some sort of way but i also recommend for this paper to really really focus on your inorganic and just make sure that you know it all i think all of us hate inorganic because of how much it's just memorizing and how many equations and how many colors like all sorts of random rubbish that you just need to know and there's not really a reason to knowing them if you know it though they're the freest marks because if you've seen the past papers all they do is they ask you write the equation for this write the equation for that balance this equation they're so so easy to get if you've done them before and if you've gone over them multiple times but if you haven't and if you've forgotten them it's the easiest marks to lose as well it will definitely be a good fraction of the paper and it's definitely worth going over them just make sure that those final minutes before your exam you should be going over those equations one last time just to make sure you remember them, right? So if you don't know which equations I'm talking about, this is all those transition metal equations, the period three equations, all those aqueous ion, aqueous ion, all those aqueous ion equations, I can't speak. All those colors even, if you don't know which colors and which things to learn, I'll try and link some stuff down below that might help. I've also been doing something myself. Let me just show you. I've been printing out like this document, right? Like, all, all these pages I have over here. Basically what I've been doing for these past couple of days for this exam, this is a really badly made document. I will link it in the description as well. It's just like a compilation of everything in organic of just things that I really want to make sure I've memorized. And the thing is for me, I know all this stuff, but I might just forget it if I don't look over it enough, right? So literally every day when I wake up I fill one of these out it takes me no longer than 30 minutes I try and do it in like 15 20 minutes though and the first page is like all of group 2 group 7 period 3 those equations and stuff and a few other random stuff that I've dotted around too and a bit of transition metals and then on the next page literally just all of aqueous ions right so like adding NaOH to hexaqua iron I forgot <laughs> I think that's how you say it I can't remember the amphoteric reactions the different colors and everything there's a table from AQA themselves that I've put here as well I just fill in each time and then I've also got the answers as well that I just check with myself just to make sure that I have actually not forgotten anything so it's really useful for that and I've actually been realizing how many things that I just keep on forgetting if I don't look over them enough so I've just been doing this like again and again and again and I'm not going to stop until my exam because I'm just thinking about it this is going to be the last time in my life probably that I'm going to have to memorize the colors for transition metal complexes I'm really trying to focus on making sure that I know every single one of these in and out and so that by the time the exam's over, I can just 
let it escape from my memory and never think about it again. It's by far my least favorite part of chemistry, but at the same time, I actually really prefer getting questions on these now because I know it all, so it's just free marks. And I really recommend that you guys learn them all too because you'll get the marks every single time. Okay, so I've talked about inorganic and I've kind of been forgetting the other really big side of this paper as well, which is the physical chemistry side of things. I think the best thing you can do with physical is to pull up as many questions as you can and just go over them like as much as possible. Now, there's one topic I'm talking about in particular, that's acids and bases. If you can do all the different types of questions in those, especially the six mark buffer calculations, the entire topic is a breeze. If you can't do those questions and you don't know those equations and like all that, this topic is really, really annoying and it's really difficult. I think for all of physical really, it's a case of just making sure that you've done enough exam questions that when you get into your exam you have seen all the different types of questions before because chemistry A level they don't really change up the way they ask questions they're always very similar I think for the physical side and even for inorganic make sure you do a good good amount of exam questions that's what I've been doing myself I've been going on to PMT going on to past papers that I've originally done looking over the questions I got wrong making sure I learn the mark schemes for things that I just keep on getting on consistently I've also been doing some of this workbook over here not as much nowadays but this is something that I used to do um, when I had the time. Nowadays, I don't really have much time and the questions are a bit rubbish in this, I can't lie. It's still good practice. Just list out all the chemistry topics that you have and order them in terms of which ones you're most likely to get right if it comes up in the exam. And then the ones at the bottom, just do a bunch of practice on them and then you'll quickly realize how repetitive the questions are and you will see improvements and then you can move on to another topic and do the same thing. Make sure you go over all the past papers that you haven't yet completed as well because by now you probably don't have time to complete all of them. So just at least familiarize yourself with those questions and look for any really big mark questions like those math questions and things and make sure that you know at least how to do those ones because if you can do those you can pretty much do all the math questions in that topic so yeah that is my a level chemistry paper one advice and my last minute tips for that best of luck guys this exam i'm personally terrified about as well and i hope it goes well um yeah i don't really have anything else to say about this exam i think i've said quite a bit but anyways good luck with your exams whether or not you have chemistry or you've just been watching this video for the sake of it and you're just here for vibes i appreciate that though so like the video if you haven't already subscribe and i'll see you guys very soon bye